All right, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to uh, the the final part of the Dominaria set review. Got a Mike B here with us today, whose face will be partially obscured by the chat, undoubtedly. And uh, yeah, now we get to go over the the final cards, the artifacts, and the one colorless card in the set for Return to not Return to Ravnica, uh, Dominaria. Dominaria. All right, I don't know why I don't know why that happened. All right, so first card. Uh, I am uh, undoubtedly excited about is Karn, four mana planeswalker for five loyal with five loyalty, plus one. Reveal the top two cards of your library. An opponent chooses one of them. Put that card into your hand and exile the other with a silver a silver counter on it. So it becomes silver. Um, so we have a. This is pretty good. It's kind of like a mini factor fiction where it's like here's two cards. Give me one. I'll remove the other one. Um, negative one, put a card you own with a silver counter on it from exile into your hand. So both his plus one and his negative one draw you cards, which is pretty sweet. Um, his negative two, so no ultimate on card. Negative two, create a zero, zero colorless construct artifact creature token. With this creature gets plus one, plus one for each artifact you control. Um, so that's fine. It's always going to be at least the one, one because it counts itself. Um, but it could be more. Mike's face will be like that Magritte painting, except instead of an apple, he'll be blocked by witty banter. And instead of wearing a little hat, he'll be a Mitch. Hmm. Yeah, all that's accurate. Um, yeah, so Karn seems amazing. Uh, you have a Planeswalker that has a plus one ability, gets you a, gets you a card, any card, basically. It's essentially showing your opponent two cards and having them pick the worst one to give you. It might as well be random at that point, right? Like, that's basically the same as just drawing a random card. Uh, and negative one... You, it's almost like a tutor effect, right? Because they're gonna exile, they're exiling your good cards, your better cards anyway. So if they exile like a Day of Judgment effect or a, a Victim of Night or a Scarab God, you just pick the one you want and get it in your hand. Like it's pretty good. How do you feel about this guy? He can also make a little gentleman. He can make multiple little gentlemen. That's true. Yeah, four man. Also, you play him for four mana, and then he automatically goes to six loyalty, which is pretty strong in, in a in a constructed format. So, Snowman. I I think this card is great. Uh, I'm looking forward to opening many of these in in the pre release and the boxes that I open after the pre release, and uh, we'll see. I, I I haven't played constructed in in paper in a while, uh, because I don't actually have any rivals Vixalon cards. I don't have any rares. I have all the commons and uncommons, but I don't have any rivals Vixalon rares because I've just been playing Magic Online. Um, so I'm looking forward to actually getting a bunch of Dominary stuff and playing live Paper Magic again, because that sounds like a good time. Maybe Mike can join me sometimes, and we'll have multiple decks. Ace Theor Glider. Three mana free, two one flyer, it can't block. Staple draft card. It's a bird construct, it's got a cool little bird skull. And that's about the end of it. Amaranthine Wall. Four mana for a 0-6 Defender. It's a wall. So it's you, we've got the wall throwback here. Uh, defender. Uh, Amar Amaranthine Wall gains indestructible. Into That's weird. I thought they were going to start saying this on cards that reference themselves. Shouldn't they say this gains indestructible until the end of turn? That's interesting. Didn't they literally... Wasn't that one of the changes? That they change the the wording of it. cards no longer reference themselves by name. They just say this. That's weird. That in this in the same set that I think that change took place. That it, it references itself by name. I'm intrigued. Mike has an itch. Isn't this a reprint? Uh, maybe. Let me know if that's true, guys. I don't know. I don't know if that's accurate. Maybe I'm missing something. Black blade reforged. Two mana fray and a legendary artifact equipment. Equipped creature gets plus one plus one for each land you control. Okay. So, at least plus two, plus two. Uh, equip, to legend, equip it to a legendary creature. It's three. Regular equip is seven. It's good with legendaries, I guess. I guess so. I mean, the problem with that is, like... I guess there's... I mean, so, presumably, if you equip this on turn seven, you're equipping it to a creature that's getting plus seven, plus seven. This actually scales incredibly well for two mana. This could be very strong. Um, you could put it on your, your regular guy for three mana, which is probably going to make it a three, three. We're assuming the only source you're getting, you're getting mana from is lands, right? So three, three or a seven set plus seven, plus seven or plus three, plus three, respectively, depending on when you're equipping this. Um, you could equip it with a turn five and still get plus five, plus five. This actually seems pretty good. It scales pretty well. The equip seven for a non-legendary creature is pretty cringy, but it's, I mean, that's a lot. That's a lot of. A lot of power and toughness boost. Blood Tallow Candle. Uh, Elena Danner is awesome, who's the artist for this. Uh, she was a friend of mine in Seattle. 
And uh, I love, it's like, she's really good. At, she's great at landscapes. And it's really awesome to see her doing, like, non-landscape stuff because she's just fantastic. She did the art for Supreme Will. I think Supreme Will was one of her first magic cards that she actually got printed. Um, either way, one mana for a Blood Tallow Candle. Six and a tap, sacrifice it, target creature gets negative five, negative five until end of turn. So, um, that wording only applies to spells if the card is on stack or first. That's not true, though. Um, they actually changed the wording on Talera's Battalion to this, right? So it says... Like, Talera's Battalion, I read a thing where it said, uh, the, the old wording... Oh, okay, so it says cast this spell only if you've cast another green spell this turn. So it refers to itself on the stack. Okay. The old wording is cast Talera's Battalion only if you played another green spell this turn. Now it says cast this spell. So it only refers to itself when it's not a permanent on the battlefield. I, I get that. Okay, that makes sense. So pr mystery solved. Um, so this is basically just six mana dismember that... This is never going to see playing constructed, but I mean, like, you'll probably put this in your deck in limited. It's ne it's neg five, neg five. It's expensive. It's six mana. Maybe if you got a Karn, you could play it because then it gives your guy big bigs. That's even better. I think if I have a Karn though, I have less problems. But yeah, I mean, you would you would play this even more so. So, more so so. What do you think of this card? Damping Sphere, two mana. This is uncommon. This isn't even rare. Oh my god! If a land is tapped for two or more mana. It produces colorless instead of any other type amount or amount. Each spell a player casts costs one more mana to cast for each other spell that player has cast this turn. I think this is just literally printed in modern to stop uh, combo. Like it was just like, hey, storm, we don't like it. What else? Isn't there another deck of hoses? Probably. You don't think Tron might might have a oh, hard sure, time with sure. the. Hey, how much does your Tron lands make? Nine? No, let's do. Uh, three. Let's say three land. Three mana. Four mana. Whatever. Yeah, this card's insane. This is like... um, <laughs> This card's ridiculous. This is like a Blood Moon. This is like a... Uh, you know, like one of the one of the rare... You can only play one card. Like a Rule of Law. Like, this is basic. I'm surprised this is uncommon. Because this is... This hoses multiple modern archetypes. For two mana. Not even for like three or four or five mana. Like, for two mana. And it... It's an uncommon, like this feels like a rare effect because usually hosers of this quality are rare. Rest in Peace, uh, Leyline of Sanctity, Stony Silence, like all those cards are rare. You know, Torpor Orb, they're all rare. Graph Digger's Cage, rare. I can keep going. Forebear's Blade, Forebear's. Equipped creature gets plus three plus O and has Vigilance and Trample. Okay. When equipped creature dies, attach it to the target creature. Wow, that's actually pretty good. That's interesting. Plus three, plus oh, Vigilance and Trample is pretty good. It's not bad. And then if they kill it, you just get to equip it for free. That's not bad. I don't know if this is constructed worthy, but... It's close. It's not bad. Vigilance and Trample are relevant abilities. Like, we could just you can trade your guy into their guy. They're like, you, you trade your 4-3, your, your which is equipped with so a 7-3, into their Scarab God. And your guys, they both die... But you get you get the value of having to getting to equip this for free to something else, so you can still develop your board, and they still have to pay another five to get their scarab gun out. So you're still dealing damage. Like uh, the value here, the value is real. Like the, this is a good card, but I don't know if it's playable and constructed. We'll see. Whoo! Gilded Lotus, Commander players rejoice! Another printing of Gilded Lotus. This card's great. I can see why they put it in the set. Um, I almost I kind of like this in a control deck in standard. Maybe I don't know. I, I bet there's expensive enough cards that we can play this. But it's a great card. This card's great. Everybody knows it's great. It's great in cube. It's great in commander. It's great in a lot of formats that it's legal in. So, Guardians of Koilos. Uh, I bet they're in the caves right now. Five mana for a 4-4. Four, four. When it enters the battlefield, we return another target historic permanent you control to its owner's hand. So you can trigger your things. You can restart your saga. Uh, you can re-trigger artifacts or legendary guys that have enters the battlefield abilities. This is fine and limited. You're going to play this if you have it. It's a 4-4 four, 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 five. It's a good body, so. Helm of the Host. Four mana for a legendary artifact equipment. More equipment again. Five mana to equip. All right, so I'm going to put it on my... I'm putting it on my Primeval Titan. At the beginning of combat on your turn, create a token that's a copy of equipped creature. Except the token isn't legendary if a creature is legendary. That token gains haste. So I, I, did, I did a good thing. 
I put on my, my Primeval Titan. Now I get to swing with two Primeval Titans. Seems good. It doesn't die at the end of the turn either. Oh, wow. That's a big deal. Mm -hmm. At the beginning of combat on your turn, create a token that's a copy, except the token isn't legendary if equipped creature is legendary. That token gains haste. Oh, wow. That's insane. Usually abilities like this, they exile the token at the end of the turn or the end of combat, right? This actually seems pretty good. You can create, you can actually create Scarab God tokens and they don't die because they are not legendary and you just get to keep them. The only problem with this is it's pretty expensive. To it is expensive, but boy, if you get one creature out, you put on like a ravenous chupacabra. Uh, I don't know, a man. A ravi choop? <laughs> a big chupa choops? Yeah, this card seems, again, the power level is there. I like this card a lot. Also, you have no you don't have to attack with it either. It's not like it's not copying an attacking creature. It's not copy it does it doesn't say you have to attack with the creature to copy it. So you don't have to like suicide your Gonti into their board and then make a copy of it, right? And you don't have to attack with the to the creature you make. It just happens at the beginning of combat and it gets haste. So you can just be like, "All right, I'll play this guy, copy this guy during the beginning of combat and then pass. I don't have to attack with either." This card seems really strong. I don't know if it's going to break through to standard. I don't know if it's it's a it just a solely commander card, but it seems strong. I think it's definitely worth keeping in mind. Howling Golem, two three for three. I, I you, you can already guess what this guy does just from the name, right? Whenever it attacks or blocks, each player draws a card. Yeah, because it's the Howling Mind guy. Yeah, Howling Mind guy. Icy Manipulator, four mana. We just saw this in the cube. I like that this is back. This is a good card. Tap an artifact creature or land. Icy is awesome. Icy is very useful. It gives decks that don't have answers ways to deal with things. Um, I, I, I've also... Icy Manipulator was also one of the first magic cards I ever... One of the first pricey magic cards I ever purchased. I think it was like 20 bucks. This is the most I'd spent on magic at the time. And it was an unlimited Icy Manipulator, which had the hand holding the ball, which looks amazing. Have you ever seen this art? Yeah. I'll bring it up for you guys if I can. It was just like one of my favorite pieces of art. And I was like, so when I first saw it, I was like, wow, this card looks super cool. That was for yesterday. Yeah, it just looks like this. So. Like, I wish they brought this art back, but they probably don't have the Douglas Schuler art. But yeah, it just looks so cool. The art, it reminded me of like an M.C. Escher painting. And I was just like, wow, this looks great. So I really liked it. Uh, so it was the first expensive card I bought. This was back when Icy Manipulators were pricey. This was like, I think before even they were reprinted in Revise, or uh, Ice Age. So, a while ago. Joyra's Familiar. Four mana for a 2-2. Two -two. Look at these, look at these, look at this owl, man. Look at this so beautiful cute. bird. Uh, historic spells you cast cost one less to cast. I mean, why is this, this is four mana though. Yeah, that's a problem. I mean, at this point I could just play whatever, right? Never knew Mike had blue eyes, considering it's usually five miles back. <laughs> oh, man. Good times. Good times. Uh, yeah, I don't know. This card, probably not seeing any play uh, in Constructed. Maybe in... It's unfortunate, because he's a little cutie. Yeah, that is a little cutie. Jousting Lance. Two mana. Equipped creature gets plus two, plus O. Oh. Equipped for three. As long as it's your turn, equipped creature has first strike. Uh, that's not exciting. My name is also Mike, and I also have blue eyes. Curzone. Happy Mike... Blue Eyes Day to you. It's today's Hooray. Mike Blue Eyes Day. Oh, it's old juggernaut. Old big jugs. <laughs> okay. That was funnier than I expected it to be. Uh, four mana for a 5-3. We all know what juggernaut does. It attacks each combat of Fable. But it's funny because juggernaut can't be blocked by walls. is very relevant now because they brought some walls back for this set because of nostalgia. So, cool. Just fine. Mishra's Self-Replicator. This art looks cool. Five mana for a 2-2. Two -two. All right. You're, you're losing me. You got to reel me back in. <laughs> Whenever you cast a Historic Spell, you may pay one if you do create a token that's a copy of... Oh. That's interesting. Because, like, once you get two of them, then you can pay two and make two copies. And then once you have four of them, you can pay four to make four copies. And then it just spirals out of control. But it does have to survive. It's a 5-mana 2-2. It does cost the mana every single time you activate it. 
This is interesting, though. This is another card I really like. I like this card. I just feel like it's it's priced in such a way that... Yeah, five mana is too much. Right. It's five mana up front. It's a 2-2. Two, two. It has to survive. You have to have another legendary, a legendary creature or permanent to, to, to get it going. A saga card, I guess. A historic card, rather. Um, so, I don't know. Again, I like it. Don't think it's going to see constructed play, but I like it. Mox Amber. This people are going crazy over this card, and I don't know if I like it very much. It's a Mox. Costs zero mana, like you do. Add one mana of any color among legendary creatures or planeswalkers you control. So, like, let's assume you're not going to have a legendary on turn one. I just don't think it's likely. Let's assume you're probably not going to have one on turn two. So, if you play one on turn three, you get to play this. Well, I mean, this could be in play already. But then you get an extra mana on turn three in addition to your three mana legendary. Richie boy, thank you so much for the for the cheers. Really appreciate it. But then, so you don't actually get the mana until like turn four. And so on turn four, you might have five mana. I think, I don't know. This card seems like... It's pretty good in commander. Obviously, Mox Amber is not for limited. Right. I, I Yeah, it's good in commander. Oh, that's a good point. I, I think people are going crazy for this card, and it feels like a... It doesn't feel like... I This does not feel like a standard card, especially because it's legendary. So if you could go turn four, play my guy, Mox, 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 get a bunch of mana, cool. But I don't think that's happening. Oh, you could play with Barrel. That's pretty good. It's not terrible. It's actually not terrible. But, like, I mean... You might say it's bearable. You mean barrel, barrelable? Yeah. Okay, I got you. It's a free historic spell. That's true. Ceram in modern. Oh, that's actually interesting. Yeah, I mean, like, okay, so don't get me wrong. This is going to have... People are going to try to break this card. I just think it takes a lot of work. So you're not going to just see it thrown into, like, regular decks, right? This is a combo card. Just like, Mox, just like its grandfather Mox Opal before it, this is a card you want to play... In decks with or with strategies that that attempt to abuse it, um, so you know, you're not really going to. Uh, how do you get her? Yeah, but Doctor Funkenberger, you actually have to have the Hazard in play for this to add red. Oh, you carry Zev, I guess, helps that. So that's a, actually the red deck with carry Zev and Hazard. That actually has a, a good number of legendaries and Chandra. Is that a that's a Planeswalker? <laughs> mm-hmm. Hope of Gearper, Ovia, and all the two mana legendary seem like a, yeah, maybe that's true. I mean, I don't know. Maybe I'm just under under appreciating this. I don't know. It seems like a lot of work to get a single mana, but I could be wrong. We'll see. We'll see. I'm, I'm eager to see, and I'm also fingers crossed that it just doesn't break whatever format it's legal in, because that is always a concern when you have a zero mana artifact that produces mana. Yeah. Definitely potential to break. Yeah, I mean, Mox Opal is, what, $60? It's always been good. Uh, Navigator's Compass, one mana. You can. This is going to be a land card. When Navigator's Compass enters the battlefield, gain three life. That's actually very good for... It's actually pretty good for one mana. Until the end of the turn, target land you control becomes the basic land type of your choice in addition to its other types. It's not bad. It's mana fixing and three life for one mana. This is not terrible. It's funny because I get more excited about this card than I do about Mox Amber. Mox Amber. Also, if there's a dinosaur in the Mox Amber, then we got a different conversation happening here. I I think this card's actually pretty reasonable. Three mana for free. Not bad. I don't think it has to ramp you. I think ramping is actually very, very strong. So just because it doesn't ramp is not terrible. Um, I think Blood Moon, I think it actually would get around the Blood Moon because it doesn't change the, the type, right? It says basic, so it would work. Uh, until the target, no, target land you control becomes the basic land type of your choice. Right. So wouldn't it work though? Because it, as far as timestamps go, this would be more recent than Blood Moon. So this would be on top of Blood Moon. So you could change like your Caves of Koilos, that's a mountain, into a different basic land type, like, a, right. like an island. Yeah. So it should work. I would imagine it works. Pardic Wanderer, six mana for a five-five Trampler. All right, I'll see you later, buddy. It's pretty draftable. Keep, keep wandering, keep wandering. 
Power Stone Shard, three mana, add a, a colorless for each artifact you control named Power Stone Shard. Definitely a commander card. <laughs> no. Just kidding. Because you can, no. Because you can, it's a joke because you can only play one. Um, it's just a joke. Yeah, but like, this is funny because it's like, it's, it's deliberately not a commander card. But on the same hand, like, it's also not really a standard card because like no. you're never going to put this on three so on turn four you have five mana you play another power stone shard for three and then you can make two mana with it i just don't like this is too much work shield of the realm two mana for if a source would deal damage to equipped creature prevent two of that damage for one mana it's not terrible i mean i feel like it's good for combat it is good for combat I was going to say, I was going to compare it to, like, uh, Lightning Greaves or Swift Foot Boots. Because, like, then you're just preventing the damage in general. But, like, those don't have effect combat. So, they can still target this creature with a removal spell, like a Doom Blade or something. But in combat, it's better. So, it's just kind of a trade-off. It's very similar, similar equipment. Short Sword. Yeah, Power Stone Shard is a kitchen table card for people who want to make a Rampy Artifact deck. And I accept that, which is why I don't criticize cards like that. I don't think cards are like... I'm, like, I'm never like, why did they make this card? This card's terrible. I, I understand all the facets of cards and that certain cards are not for me while other cards are. Totally get that. And everyone else should as well because just because you don't like a card, it's probably just not for you. And that's that's literally what it comes down to. They can't only make cards that you like because then that doesn't work. Short sword, one mana, equipped creature gets plus one, plus one, equipped for one. That's pretty boring, but I, eh, you'll play it unlimited probably. Skittering Surveyor, three mana for a one, two. Let me pull this up so I know when it works. Uh, one, two. When Skittering Surveyor enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a basic land card, reveal it, put it into your hand. Though. I like cards like this. I'm a big Pilgrim's Eye fan. Yeah, this so, is basically a non-flying Pilgrim's Eye. Yeah, this is a Pilgrim's foot. It's got one more butt, so that's good. It's got one more butt. It don't float, but it's got a bigger butt, so that's fine. I can see playing that card, actually. I like cards. that It's just a it's just a one-two that draws you a card. Sure, sure, sure. Sure. Uh, equip creature has t one mana, three to equip. This creature does one damage to target creature or planeswalker. If this creature is a wizard, deals two damage to that creature. Wow, that's actually Oh, to target player or planeswalker. Okay, so you can't hit creatures. That would be pretty pretty ridiculous, I guess. Um Tapping to deal two damage to a player or a planeswalker is not terrible. I don't know if this is the kind of enchantment you want in your deck for for one mana and then equipping for three. Um or artifact, you know. It's an enchantment. Huh. I always get enchantment and equipment confused. I always call them the same things. Either way, I, I think this card is fine. I think if, if someone has this in limited, they're probably going to play it 100% of the time, even if they don't have wizards. Um, if you could ping creatures, I can see this card being okay. If this, if you could ping creatures and deal them two damage just by equipping it to a wizard, that's really strong. Uh, you're probably actually... I don't know. It depends, like, if, it depends on what your deck looks like in limited. If you have a lot of wizards, you're definitely playing this. If you don't, you might, because you might have, like, walls. It's just a good way to get one damage and guaranteed every turn. Um, if they have, if you see your opponent having a Planeswalker, you're probably definitely playing it. 1-1 one, one for 1. When Sparring Construct dies, put a 1-1 one, one counter on target creature you control. Wow, this is great. He just has affinity. It's just literally uh, Arcbound Worker. That's cool. Pretty much. I just like all these cards because they're doing the thing. It's the card without calling it the card and without having the card's mechanic on it, you know? Thran Temporal Gateway. Uh, you may put a historic... Okay, so this is just Quicksilver Amulet, but instead of creatures, it's for historic permanence. Um, so four mana to cast, and then four and a tap to activate. You may put a historic permanent card from your hand onto the battlefield. This card seems great. Oh, it has modular. Right, sure. Modular, not affinity. You guys, you guys win. My bad. You knew what I was saying. You knew what I meant. Um, so yeah, this card... I love this card. I want to be able to put like seven eight nine mana cards into play that i that i would be struggling to cast otherwise my problem is Coligon's command in modern my problem is a braid in standard there are just so many super efficient artifact removal cards that spending four mana on something that you have to then untap with and spend another four mana is problematic a braid is really oppressive a braid is really oppressive 
Um, giving red decks or any deck that runs red the ability to destroy any artifact whatsoever at zero cost to your deck building is pretty strong. So, I don't know. Like, you heard him. We win. <laughs> Oh my god. I love this card. Don't get me wrong. I loved Quicksilver Amulet as well. And I wanted to cheat in Blightsteel Colossuses, Colossi, and um, there was other huge huge cards that I wanted to put into play with that at, at the time as well. I just can't think of them right now because it was a while ago. But I remember when it was it was reprinted in a core set. And uh, I really liked it then. Let me find out which one it was. It was reprinted in Magic 2020. So yeah. Awesome. 2020? 2020, that was my vision. 2012, 2012. Oh my god, I'm, it's, it's good, guys. We're having a good time. Yeah, a braid is the is to artif good artifacts, which Remokus Command was to good enchantments and standard. Uh, totally, totally correct. Uh, there were just decks in th in Theros standard, which was awkward because you wanted to play all the artifacts in that set that you just couldn't play because they had Jermokus Command. So you would play like Starfield of Nyx, and then they'd find a way to make you sacrifice it. Or they'd make you sacrifice something else for just for just no cost. It's crazy. Traxos, Scourge of Krug. It's a good name. Four mana for a 7-7 seven, seven with Trample. Uh, enters the battlefield tapped and doesn't untap during your untap step. Whenever you cast a historic spell, untap this. This could be very good. Like, you could just play this. You could find a way to play this on turn three with Llanowar Elves and just go historic guy, historic guy, historic guy. Because it's not just... It's any artifact is historic. Any saga is historic. That's a... A lot of cards. Well, the format for a 7-7, seven, seven, which is pretty large. And it has Trample, so you can't just chump block this guy. I can see you playing this on turn 3. Playing another one on turn 4 to untap this one. <laughs> and then attacking for 7, right? Well, it is legendary, so that would be a little... So you can't do that. Don't do that. I mean, you can. Don't do that. But anyway, you can play the Mox. You Ooh. can play the Mox to untap this. That's pretty good. If you have an artifact, can you add Colorless with the Mox? I don't think so, because it says any color. It doesn't say colorless. It doesn't say it doesn't say any type of mana. The wording is really important there. I'm gonna look it up right now because I have the window open. All right. Um, Amber Mox says, "One man, if any color among legendary." Okay, so if you have a, a legendary colorless card, I don't think you can add colorless for it. So. Dang, that is unfortunate. Urza's Tome, two mana. Books always have you draw cards. A lot of times, make you discard too. Three mana and a tap, draw a card, then discard a card, unless you exile a historic card from your graveyard. Hmm. It's not bad. It's not terrible, right? Like, either you're pitching lands in the late game, or you're able to exile just an artifact from your graveyard, and then, then it's just free. Then it's just a free card, draw for three mana. It's not bad. I could definitely see this making it into a control deck. Like, it seems fine. Voltaic Servant, two mana for a 1-3. At the beginning of your end step, untap target artifact. Hey, we found our companion... For Trag, for Trug, Traxos, Traxos of Krug. So you just play that guy. Not only does he originally untap Traxos because he's an artifact, so he's historic, but in the future, he can help out. He can untap him again. So he it gives him like, it's like a pseudo vigilance. It's pretty good. Pretty good. The Weatherlight, the last artifact. Four mana. We've been waiting for this card for a while, I feel like. Four mana for a mythic 4 5 flying creature. Crew, three. And apparently, all of the legendary creatures in the set who were who were members of the Weatherlight have three power, so they can all crew the Weatherlight, which is a nice a nice mm. bit of a nice bit of flavor there. It's a flavor win. When Weatherlight deals combat damage to a player, look at the top five cards of your library. You may reveal a historic card from among them and put it into your hand, and put the rest in the bottom of your library in a random order. Not bad. It's not bad. Um, I don't think it's great. Still not better than Fatty Boat. Maybe it's pretty good. I don't know. Four mana is pretty cheap. And, like, then you get to attack for four in the air. Um, it does have to deal combat damage. And then you just get a, a free kind of, like, a kind of like a tutor, I would imagine. Like, you're probably going to hit something in five cards. You're going to have an artifact, a saga, or a legendary card if you if you put together your deck the, the correct way. Like, so I don't think that's out of the question. Um... But crew three is a lot to, to ask. I agree. I don't like it when your crew amount is is that close to your power, right? So you're you're paying you're tapping a three power creature to deal four damage. So you're not really getting that much of a bonus. You're expending two cards for plus one power, which is not a great deal. Which is why something like Sky Sovereign, which is six damage uh, for three power, 
is significantly better because then it actually feels like you're attacking with both cards, right? Or you could put five lands to the bottom. Yeah, that's a, that's an option as well. Um, either way, art, some of the artifacts look really sweet. Some of them, a lot of them look like they are going to uh, try, they're like begging to be broken. Um, some of them like Damping Sphere are automatically includes in Modern, which is amazing. Uh, I think I think this set has been great. I really have enjoyed uh, looking at these Dominary cards. I can't wait to play with it this weekend. I can't wait to go to FNM next weekend and hopefully uh, swing, swing, some, swing some spells. Maybe me and Mike B can go to an FNM and then we can talk about it afterwards. Uh, I can put some decks together for us. And uh, if you guys haven't done so, hit up my Patreon. It's patreon.com slash franklapore. I will be updating it regularly. So uh, if you guys are interested in that, let me know. If you guys have any feedback, let me know. If you guys haven't done so, slam those like and subscribe buttons. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.